Now we're going to talk about the MHC class 2 molecule and the genes that encode for the proteins found in the MHC class 2 molecule. So we're back to chromosome 6 to the MHC, the major histocompatibility complex, the large region of chromosome 6, which contains the genes that code for the proteins that are involved in antigen presentation. So when we talk about the MHC class 2 molecule, what we're talking is about this uh, dimer. There's an alpha chain and a beta chain, and it presents peptides to CD4 positive T cells. So if there's an alpha chain protein and a beta chain protein in MHC class 2 pro molecules, which we're going to also call HLA class 2 molecules. So again, the terms MHC class 1 and HLA class 1 um, are sometimes used interchangeably when talking about this molecule that presents peptides to CD4 positive T cells. But it's made of two protein chains, the alpha and the beta. So these proteins, where do they come from? There must be genes that code for these proteins. And there are. And so, and now it's going to turn out that there are many different types of, many different genes that code for these proteins. So we're going to start with um, the isotype HLA-DP. So um, the genes that code for these proteins, they've got weird names. Um, we had HLA A, B, and C for MHC class 1 alpha chain. For uh, MHC class 2, we've got this, this, these terms HLA, and then usually it's two letters. So here we have DP. And there's an alpha chain and a beta chain, so there must be two genes that code for those. And there is, there's the HLA-DPA1 and HLA-DPB1. So you have these genes on your chromosome 6, and you have two copies of chromosome 6. So you've got uh, two uh, versions of each of these genes. So the HLA-DPA1 gene codes for the alpha chain of MHC class 2. HLA-DPB1 gene codes for the beta chain of MHC class 2. Okay. Are there different versions of these genes? Yes, there are versions. There are different alleles, which will produce different proteins, which we were calling allotypes. How many different alleles and allotypes are there of these genes? So for the uh, HLA-DPA1, there are about 17 different alleles that produce 70 different allotypes of the protein. For HLA-DPB1, over 250 allotypes of this gene. So again, you only inherit two copies of HLA-DPB1, but which versions do you inherit? Which alleles? Well, there are many different ones in the human population. What are different between the two, between all these different alleles or allotypes? Um, it has to do with their peptide binding capacity. So they might be able to hold and bind different peptides. Uh, and again, the more variety you have in your ability to present more different peptides, the better your chances of having a T-cell receptor that binds and recognizes a peptide. So if we said, for example, uh, that for your HLA-DPA1, so for your A1 gene, you've got two copies of the gene. Which alleles did you inherit? Well, there's 17 possibilities in the human population. Let's say you inherit allele number 1 and allele number 14. And for HLA-DPB1, there are over 200 uh, alleles in the human population that have been recognized so far, characterized. Let's say you inherit uh, version 20 and version 77, the random numbers. Um, so that what does that mean for your ability to present peptides? Well, um, if you make an MHC class, one, class 2 molecule, and we're making it from the HLA-DP genes, um, that could present some peptide. Whereas the other version of this HLA-DP uh, isotype um, it's made from alleles 14 and 77 of the A1 and the B1 gene. So each of these most likely has a different and distinct uh, peptide binding motif that could present different peptides. And that's good. Again, you want to present as many different peptides as you can to the uh, T cells. Okay, so that's um, one set of genes that code for 
these MHC2 complexes. Are there more? Yes, there are more. Uh, so these are called the HLA-DP molecules. Again, they're just MHC class II molecules. They just present to, uh, CD4 positive T cells. Are there more genes? Yes, there are more genes. And again, now, that, now we're back to gene families. We have multiple genes that accomplish the same function, which is to present peptides to C T cell receptors on CD4 positive T cells. So there's another set of genes called HLA-DQ genes. So there's the DQA1 and the DQB1. And they're on chromosome 6. You've got two copies of chromosome 6, so you have two copies of these genes. And when these genes are expressed, they're going to produce the alpha chain and the beta chain of an MHC class 2 that originated from the DQ uh, genes. So we call these the HLA-DQ isotypes or isoforms. Are there different versions of these genes in the human population, different alleles? Yes. Um, so again, these genes are highly polymorphic. There are many different versions in the human population. 32 versions of the DQA1 gene, 90, uh, almost 400 versions or allele of the DQB1 gene. Again, why so many different alleles in the human population? Well, um, each allele is going to have a, a, its own ability to present a peptide, to bind and hold on to a peptide. And uh, these alleles differ in the ability to bind different peptides. So again, if you inherit, let's say, uh, DQA1, you inherit, inherit version 10 uh, of the A1 and version 40 of the B1, then those would be expressed and they dimerize and will present a peptide. Whereas version 20 of A1 and um, version 60 of B1, when those are expressed, they dimerize and they present a peptide. Both of these um, MHC2 molecules originated from the DQ genes, and um, they are probably presenting different peptides based on their you know, DNA information that codes for proteins that can bind different peptides. You will notice that um, the uh, dimers form between the ones on the same chromosomes, and that is typically the case where you can see uh, DQA1 and DQB1 um, allele 10 and allele 40 paired up, and then allele 20 and allele 60 paired up. And that is typically the case where um, you don't have a uh, formation of alleles, uh, of uh, HLA molecules that cross uh, different A's and B's. Okay, is there any more? Well, that's DP, that's DQ, so these are the HLA DP genes, the HLA DQ genes, there are HLA-DR genes. So these are even a little more complicated because if you look at the versions of the different genes present in the HLA-DR region, I see HLA-DRA and multiple HLA-DRB genes. So there's B1, there's B3, there's B4, and there's B5. That's a lot of versions, right? Why so many versions? What are they going to do? Well. The HLA-DRA, there it's going to make the alpha chain. And actually, this is one instance where there are very few versions in the human population. Two, only two identified. So this is not polymorphic. This is dimorphic. There are only two versions. And you can inherit, you know, two copies of one, two copies of the other, or you can be heterozygous. But for these other versions, there are many copies. So for the DRB1, gene, there are over a thousand different alleles or allotypes of this gene. So again, what you, what you inherit depends on um, your genetics. So the DRB1 uh, gene is going to make the beta chain, so that's great. Now, what about this other one over here, this DRB3 or 4 or 5? So it turns out we have multiple DRB1 genes. And each of them can be expressed and pair with the DRA um, gene or protein. So you can see there at the bottom, um, we have two different HLA-DR molecules. Um, we've got a version that contains the, B, the beta chain from the B1 gene, and we've got another version of the beta chain 
from either B3 or 4 or 5. Some people um, have inherited B3. Some people have a functional B4. Some people have a functional B5. Uh, everybody has a functional B1, but these other genes, um, typically you have one functional one of them. Uh, some people don't have any 3 or 4 or 5. They just have B1. So in the human uh, population, you do typically have multiple DRB uh, genes. So again, what's the advantage of having all these different versions of the genes? It's to be able to present as many different peptides as possible. So you've got HLA-DR molecules that can present peptides as well. So those are from one chromosome, those are from the other chromosome. So don't forget that you have another set of HLA-DR genes. So if you look at all of these um, peptides you can present, actually you can pre present quite a bit of them, right? All of these molecules at the end, those four uh, MHC class one molecules, where did all four of those come from? They came from the HLA-DR genes. The other ones came from the other HLA genes. So for example, um, we've got a set that came from the HLA-DP genes. We've got a set that came from the HLA-DQ genes. Um, so there are approximately um, eight isoforms of HLA-2 molecules that are found on the surface of professional antigen-presenting cells. So you got to go back and remember the fact that MHC class II molecules are typically expressed and present only on professional antigen-presenting cells, and those include dendritic cells, macrophages, and B cells. So those, even though these genes are present in every cell of the body, they are only expressed in those three professional antigen-presenting cells. And if you looked at the surface of B cells or um, dendritic cells or macrophages, you will find at most, uh, typically, eight isoforms of MHC class II. We'll talk in the next video about their ability to load peptide. But again, the more peptides you load, the better.